laying out your walls. When you originally looked at the floor plan, you should have put in your dimensions all the way around for the distances, overall lengths, locations of doors and windows, locations and partition walls. When you locate a window or a wall or a door, you actually deal in the center line. There's the line with the center in it. And as you calculated with a scale, you would have found the location of the center line of this partition wall was, eight, uh, was four feet, zero inches from the outside of the exterior wall. And when you convert that to a two inch scale, that would be eight inches. And you would find the location of this door, this exterior door, to be from this outside wall all the way over, eight feet, zero inches on the three quarter equals one foot scale. And you convert that to our model, which would make that 16 inches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out this wall right here and show you the marks that you would put on it. You start with two boards, a bottom plate and a top plate, bottom and top. What I'm going to lay out first is I'm going to locate my doors, my wall, and my door. And doors and windows locate the same, but there's a little bit of drawing difference on them. Just like we did on the whiteboards when we laid out floors and we practiced laying out walls. I've already pre-cut these to 24 inches to match the model. I know this partition wall here is laid out at eight inches. So at eight inches, I'm gonna put me a little mark, not a big one, and that put a little C on it. That reminds me that's my center line. Because you start at the center, and then you work your way out. Now my door here is located at 16 inches. Put a little mark, a little mark put a C on it, so I know that's where the center of my door is going to be. A couple ways to do this. In the, in the real world, to work with this partition wall right here, you know the size of the T's, you know your two by four is three and a half, and then you add another one. You can do a little bit of math. As far as this, as far as what we're doing for our model, what I would do is take my T that I've already made set it down on my project and trace some marks around it. You'll end up with something that looks a little bit like that. Use my speed square to transfer from the bottom plate to the top plate because you're going to want them to line up. Remember, X is for common studs. And for filler blocks, you put a series of dashes. So that when I go to build this, I'm gonna take my bottom plate and lay it down, my top plate and lay it down. I'm gonna take my T and see wherever the filler blocks line up at so that it lines up over it. and I get all my pieces in line, then I can go back and nail my walls in place. And then when you finish with it, it would stand up as a wall. So that's our partition wall, we have it in place. Now let's figure our door. What you gotta calculate to start with, when you, cause I drew the center line, but there's nothing here. I've got to figure out and locate the edge and the edge of the trimmer and king from my trimmer and my king, my trimmer and my king, where they're going to locate on this wall somewhere. So I know I'm at 16 inches. I've got a door that's three foot wide. 3068 door. I got three feet of width. That's going to give me a foot and a half on either side. And when I do the little math conversion here, I know that's gonna be three inches on, on my scale model. So I'm gonna take my center line. And I'm gonna go three inches. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that's gonna tell me where my trimmer goes. Or the inside edge of the, the, the total rough opening for my door. Now in the real world, remember, we take our three feet and we had an inch to either side, so you'd actually end up with something that would be 38 inches. 
Now there's a couple ways to do this. You can either, you know that they're about a half an inch, so you can use a scale on there to do it. Or one of the easiest way is keep your little block of wood handy. And all you need is a little reference mark, because you can go back with your speed square and draw it nice and pretty. Now there's a little bit of different nomenclature here. If you notice, your king stud goes all the way through and touches the top plate on both sides. The trimmer goes and stops and touches the header. Now normally if there's a space here, you put a little bitty block above it. We call that a cripple. So we have the trimmer. This is our bottom plate, starting from the bottom, working up to the top plate. We have a trimmer on this side, a trimmer on this side, a king, and the king's going to pass all the way through. King, and the king's going to pass all the way through. But on the top, we would have a cripple. And that's the basic layout for the door and the window. And what I have to do now is come in at my two and three eighths, just like we did on floor joist. And we've got to lay in where our common studs go. First one goes at two and three eighths. And what that does is establish the edge of it right there. If it's easier for you, you could come in and do them this way and draw a line all the way across, then place your X and know exactly where it's going to go. Now for here, I'm going to take my edge at 2 and 5 eighths, come over where my 2 and 5 eighths is, and there's one. That's another common stud. I'm going to come over again, 2 and 5 eighths. Now I'm in the middle of this T. That's already enough support. I can skip that one, but I need to put me a reference mark there. So I come on to the next one, because when I get on top of the doors, I've got to do something different again. All I'm doing is putting little reference marks down right now. Two and five eighths. This two and five eighths falls right on top of that cripple, right next to that cripple. You can also use the little blocks like I showed you before. So, I've got, starting back over, I've got another common that's going to go here. Where I need a stud here, there's already material there, I'm good to go. Come down to this one, I need another common joist to go there. Now I'm over the top of this doorway, and if you remember like I said, on the top of the doorway, you have cripples that go up here. But there's nothing at the bottom where the opening is. So. There's one that started right here beside this one. So I've got another cripple beside that one. I come over in the middle. I've got another cripple that's almost on the center line. And then here, I've got another cripple. In reality, these two are here so close, I would probably just take this one and nail it up against that other one. Now, I'm back to common studs. And there's another common stud. Now the last thing we go in and figure in is we got to put our T in place. Remember we, I mean, our, I mean our corner. We have to put our corner in place, which is going to stand something like that in the picture. When you nail it together, to go together like that. So it's almost just as easy as it was to take your T. lay it down in place and just use it to make a couple little reference marks. Remember these are full length and in the middle is filler blocks. And you do the same thing to the other side.
Full length, full length, filler, filler, filler. Full length, full length. So now, what you have is the place for where your T is going to go. And when you put it together, it's actually going to turn like that, flip over, and you come over. And then I can tell that this is a door opening because there's nothing drawn here, and I've got a bunch of cripples on top. A window would actually have the cripple. It would be cripples, cripples on either side. Anything inside the trimmers all now becomes cripples. When you place marks for these cripples, remember I've got a trimmer, you automatically come right inside and draw a cripple, come right inside and draw a cripple, and then wherever the on centers at two and five eighths fall is where you would draw the other cripples, and you actually draw it through to the bottom plate. That's roughly what your wall should look like on the long side. Now remember, we have the header joist and the starter walls. You need to do the two long walls first, and header joist and start and the two long walls will be the same length. And your rim joist and your two walls on the side should be the same length. Now when you do the side wall, we won't put a corner here. We'll actually only put just a single stud, just a single X, and then and continue on with our marks. And remember when you're laying out for your own centers, the wall is going to roughly come together something like that. When you start laying out center on your short wall to get your marks for your two and you start at two and three eighths, you actually start from the outside of the building, which would be here, come over two and three eighths, make a mark, and then take off and put the rest of the marks in.